there is more insulin present, then what will happen? More means that more glucose will be taken from the blood and more will be converted into glycogen, right? Yes. Right? So there will be a decrease in the blood sugar level. As more is being taken and more is being converted into glycogen, if more is being taken from the blood, there will be a decrease in the blood glucose concentration. First thing. The second, it can result in the shock and it can also result in coma and death may occur. This is because of the shortage in the glucose concentration in the blood. Right? If there will be deficiency of the glucose, then it can lead to different problems. There will be less oxidation, less energy production, which will lead to the coma and which will also lead to the death. And this was about the insulin. Now there is another hormone in your slavers and this is this one is about the adrenal gland. Right? There are three. First is insulin, we have studied, and the second one is adrenaline. I'm going to teach you all three today, right? And you're going to learn this tomorrow. And then uh, in the remaining days, we will be solving the worksheets. And I, I would like to see that how do you solve the worksheets, right? The mar the, uh, do you use the words according to mark scheme or not? And we I actually have to make you practice according to mark scheme. All right, the next is adrenal gland. All right, adrenal gland is actually present at the top of the kidneys. Right, at the top of the kidneys, we see that there is a gland present which is known as the adrenal gland, right? And in kidneys, we studied that there is a renal cortex and renal medulla. Do you remember? Yeah. What was the renal cortex and renal medulla? Outer part was the renal? Cortex. Yes, and the inner one was? Medulla. Inner one was medulla, right? When we are talking about the kidney, we use the word renal cortex and renal medulla, right? Renal word is for the kidney. In the same way, the gland which is present at the top of the kidney is known as the adrenal gland, right? And adrenal gland also has two parts. Outer is the cortex, similar to kidney, and the inner of the adrenal gland is the medulla, just like the renal cortex and the renal medulla, right? To differentiate it from the kidney, we use the word adrenal, for adrenal gland and we use the word renal for the kidney right so it will be adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla when we will be talking about the adrenal gland and when we will be talking about the kidney we will use the word renal cortex and the renal medulla clear yeah yeah it has two similar parts outer one is the cortex and inner one is the medulla right they secrete different hormones, medulla secretes different hormones and the cortex secretes different hormones and they secrete many hormones. They do not secrete just one and two, they secrete many and in your syllabus there is just one which is the adrenal line, right? Adrenal, adrenal line is secreted by your medulla. Medulla is the inner part, outer is the cortex and you, you can see here it is secreted by the adrenal medulla, adrenal line. Right, and when it is secreted, the situation, it is secreted in fear, fright, flight, anxiety, or when there is stress, then it is secreted. Okay, Anna, just tell me one thing. What will happen? This is secreted in fear, right, fight or flight situation, do or die situation, right, fight or flight situation, when there is fear, then it is secreted. When we see lion, Right, or when we see any harmful animal, like snake, lion, then this hormone is secreted. Right? Tell me, Amna, what would happen if this would not have been secreted? Then we probably wouldn't have been very scared and we would have been slower. Yeah, what happened here? Yeah. Then what would have happened? The lion would have eaten us or we would have harmed us, like injured us. So, this helps us in preventing us from so many situations, danger, harm, like. So this is yeah. important for the secretion. Okay, and how, what is its function? Its function is opposite to insulin. What was the function of the insulin? One, its one function is opposite to insulin. Just tell me what, which function is that? Like for what, insulin? Yeah, we study the function of insulin is to? Decrease blood glucose concentration, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and then what will be the function of the adenylene if I'm saying its function is opposite to insulin? Uh, it increases blood glucose yeah, concentration. It increases blood glucose concentration. And we studied, I told you there is also another hormone which is secreted by the eyelids of Langerhans and it also do opposite job to insulin. Which was that? Uh, like the tear glands? No, 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 no. It has opposite function to insulin. One is adenaline. And the other one we have discussed in the previous slide when I was talking about the uh, two hormones secreted by the pancreas. Glucagon. Yeah, Glucagon, right? Glucagon also yeah. increases the blood glucose concentration. And yeah. the adrenal gland also increases the blood glucose concentration. Just remember this. Okay, how it helps in this uh, in these conditions, fear, fight, flight, anxiety, or how it brings the conditions to normal. There are some of the functions or some of the actions which are brought about by the adrenaline. It increases the blood glucose concentration, right? And uh, yeah. by speeding up the breakdown of glycogen, which was actually formed by insulin it breaks down the glycogen into glucose and that glucose is added into the blood which increases the concentration of glucose into the blood right and this was stored into the muscles and the muscle and the liver the second one is wait um okay yes the second one is it increases the heartbeat <laughs> No, why? Okay. Right, the second one is it increases the metabolic rate. What will happen during the metabolic rate? This means that it produces more energy, right? And it is released into the tissue respiration. Why? Because just uh, think of one of the example. For example, if we see lion, right? Or heartbeat increases and uh, our uh, breathing rate also increases. Why our heartbeat increases? Heartbeat increases because it has to pump blood very quickly to some parts of the body, right? Why it has to pump blood blood quickly? For example, if ha it has to pump blood quickly to the organs which will move, or it has to pump blood quickly to our legs, right? Why? Because the legs has to move quickly to run away or to produce any of the response or any of the action. In this case, when we see lion, the here we have to run very quickly, right? So for this purpose, more, I cannot use this. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me. Okay. Right, it increases the metabolic rate. Metabolic rate will produce more energy as more energy should be provided to those parts of the body which has to produce movements like legs, like arms, right? And it also increases the heartbeat. Purpose of increasing heartbeat is it increases uh, blood pressure, right? And so more oxygen and the glucose are carried faster to the muscles as they have to respire very quickly they have to produce more energy which is required for the movement right and for producing more energy more respiration should occur and respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen and glucose and how this oxygen is and glucose is provided to the cell this is provided by beating the heart faster right the other one is it constricts the arteries it constricts the arteries which are closer to the skin. Constrict means that if the arteries will constrict, less blood will flow. Constrict means arteries will become narrow, so less blood will flow. And more, why? Because uh, this less blood is supplied to the arteries which are closer to the skin. Because more blood has to be supplied to different parts of the blood, more blood has to be supplied to the muscles. That's why less is supplied to the skin and more is supplied to the muscles. Why is more supplied to the muscles? Like, uh, so that... More oxygen? So, you know, it, yeah, so more oxygen. More so oxygen. Glucose, yes, more glucose should be provided to the muscles so that they should carry out respiration and they should produce energy for the movement, right? And it also increases the coagulation rate of the blood. Coagulation is the clotting, 
if as any injury occurs then it also increases the coagulation rate clotting rate of the blood there then it relaxes the bronchioles and increases the air flow to the lungs there bronchi and bronchioles any reason why it relaxes or you can say it increases the diameter of the bronchi and the bronchioles what do you think why there should be more diameter of the bronchi or bronchioles bronchi and bronchioles are for taking in oxygen yes we are inhaling right Correct. yeah Correct. They need, yes they need more oxygen so that more respiration should occur right so this is also increased then it also causes the people to dilate right and the purpose is to enhance vision so that we should see clearly what is uh, it or what is is there is any harm danger or anything dangerous then it also contracts here muscles producing the goose pimples or goose bumps hmm. yeah so you need to learn these points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 learn these very carefully it is, if it comes for three marks four marks two marks you can write any one of these eight okay and this and there is also one mark for the secretion or the situation it is secreted in it is secreted in fight and flight situation right you can write down any one of these stress anxiety fear anger you can write any one of these as well so let's wind up this today the other one or the last one is the hormones of the reproductive systems or hormones of the glands right in male testes are the gonads and gonads are the reproductive organs the other name of the gonad is the reproductive organs in male these are the testes and in female these are the ovaries right testes are the reproductive organs testes are reproductive organs in male and in female ovaries are the reproductive organs we will we will study about them in detail in a reproduction right once we will study the production then it will be easy for you to understand the terms which are used here writing this okay gonads and uh, gonads are the reproductive organs testes are in male and ovaries are in female right and these testes secrete a hormone which is known as the testosterone and i told you in the beginning that pituitary gland is also known as the master gland right pituitary sometimes trigger some other glands to produce their hormones right yeah. and pituitary also triggers or reproductive glands to produce its hormones so testes in male and ovaries in female some of the hormones not hormone all hormones some of the hormones are produced under the influence of the pituitary so testes secretes testosterone under the influence of the pituitary and what is the function of the testosterone it is involved in the development of the male body characteristics right during fetal stage what is the fetal stage when the baby is inside the body of the mother right and gestation period which is the pregnancy period in female this is total of 9 months of human beings right in first 3 months what happens all the organs of the baby are formed and there are stages there is egg egg is the female cell right it fertilizes with the sperm sperm is the male sex cell or gamete they both fertilize and they form the zygote right they form zygote zygote is the fertilized egg right then the zygote divides and it forms many celled or ball of cell which we call as embryo these words are actually used in embryology we just come to know from these words that what or which stage they are talking about right then this embryo further divides develops and different these cells cells which are formed in embryo these undergo differentiation and then they form different organs of the body for example if these part are going to form brain they will form brain these will form legs these will form eyes lungs liver intestine everything is formed and all the organs are formed within 3 months right when all the organs are formed then this embryo is referred to as the fetus we call it as a fetus right after 3 months the baby is yeah. called as a fetus it means that when we are using the word fetus it means that baby has all the organs formed when we are saying embryo it means okay and about the first to third month 
in first to third month in in the beginning fertilization occurs right and in first to three months what happens is embryo is formed cells keep on multiplying right they form two cell four eight then million trillion billions of cells are formed then those cells undergo differentiation within three months this happens in first three months and all the organs are formed when all the organs are formed then the baby is referred to as the fetus we use the word fetus right what happens in the remaining six months in the remaining six months the size of the fetus is increased or the baby is increased it grows in size right none of the organ is formed nothing happens only size increases and if any of the defect has occurred in first three months or during development that will be permanent and that will be throughout life it will never be cured in the remaining six months because everything has been formed it cannot be cured now clear so there are some of the terms or some of the words which are used here so you need to remember those this is first development of the male body right during fetal stage fetal stage means ki when the baby boy is being formed inside the body of the mother then then male sex organs and scrotum is formed so male sex organs their male sex organs are the testes right and what is scrotum these testes are present in a skin or bag of skin right these testes are present in a these are the testes circular and these are present in a bag of skin which we call as a scrotum this is the membrane in which the their reproductive organs are present scrotum is the scrotum is the outer covering or bag of skin which is made up of skin into which these testes of their male sex organs are present the second is it helps in controlling the development of the primary and the secondary sexual characteristics like coarseness of voice their voice becomes uh, 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 like um, you can say their voice becomes heavy coarse we use the word coarseness of voice then beard occurs like mustache hair facial hair these are the secondary sexual characteristics and these are because of the testosterone this hormone clear yeah right primary and secondary primary is the development of the uh, sperms or sex cells this comes in primary and secondary is the coarseness of voice right uh, the coarseness of voice deepening of the voice hair then the growth of the facial hair mustache and beard appears on their mouth Uh, face this is the secondary sexual characteristics and then it's also needed for the development of the sperm this is the primary structure sperms are the sex cells of the male in female the ovaries these are the reproductive organs they produce hormones one is the estrogen and other is the progesterone estrogen these are also secreted by the influence of the pituitary right estrogen it controls the development of the female sex organs sex organs in female these are the ovaries and secondary sexual characteristics which is the development of the mammary glands right or the breast which produce milk afterwards and then it's a broadening of the pelvis pelvis is or hip bone simple words right this hip region is known as the pelvic region so it also broadens or increases in size and this is because of the estrogen this helps during uh, delivery right and the other one is the progesterone progesterone it's also known as a pregnancy hormone and it prepares the uterus for implantation i'm going to tell you these words of the embryo embryo we have discussed right which causes the enlargement of the mammary glands right and mammary glands are some of the glands which are present in breast and these glands produce the milk they are responsible for the production of the milk after the delivery of the baby right during pregnancy and they prevent ovulation now note down some of the words here they have used the word uterus right uterus is the womb we will be studying in detail about this in reproduction uterus is the womb into which the development of the baby occurs inside the body of the mother right there is the uterus in which the baby develops into a complete fetus or the embryo develops into complete fetus that's the uterus then there is implantation implantation is the conceiving or the placement of the embryo into uterus is known as implantation right placement yeah. of embryo into the it is coming from a tube then it is implanted into this uterus so this 
placement is known as the implantation of the embryo. Then there is enlargement. Then there is ovulation. Ovulation is the release of egg from the ovary. Right? Ovary is the reproductive organ into which egg is Egg is, this is the ovary into which egg is produced. This is the female sex or female sex cell, egg or gamete, it is produced. Then it comes out of the ovary for fertilization with the sperm. Comes out of the ovary, right? So this release of egg from the, this release of egg from the ovary is known as ovulation. So it also prevents ovulation so that the further fertilization should not occur and the baby's growth should Continue in the normal way. Clear? Okay. Okay. The other one is. Okay. This is we have almost done. The other one is the comparison or difference between the nervous control and the hormonal control. As we have completed the complete chapter and uh, all the topics. And we have studied about nervous, nervous and hormonal control as well. So difference is very important. Nervous control, we have studied that nerves or neurons are involved, right? And it messages travel through the nerve impulses or electrical signals or electrochemical signals, right? Here, hormones are involved and this is the only chemical substance. It, in this message travels through hormones and in this message travels through nerve impulses or through neurons. This is the first difference. Second is like it is transmitted by neurons and in this it is transmitted by blood. It travels from one part of the body to the other part through blood and in this neurons carry or nerve cells carry message from one part to the other part. We have studied sensory motor relay neurons. Then this is very quick reflex action. You can give the example very quick which occurs in even nanoseconds and this is very very slow. Sometimes slow, but sometimes it's quick too. But as compared to nervous response, it is very slow, right? This is quick, this is slow, and this difference is important, right? You need to write this uh, according to mark your marks in the mark scheme. If it's for three, write down three points. If it's for four, write down four, five, and so on. Like response is short-lived, touching, like uh, moving your hand away from the hot object. And this may be short and it may be long lived as we have discussed in thyroxine, right? And as we have discussed in the adrenaline, it's short lived. Then it can be voluntary. If your brain is involved and thinking is involved, then it can be involuntary as well. But this is always involuntary. You cannot control the release of the adrenaline yourself. You cannot control the release of insulin yourself. If there will be high level of glucose, insulin will be automatically released from the body. We cannot control them. Then it is localized. It can, uh, uh, response can be on your hand, it can be in your eyes, like blinking of the eyes, but this can affect more than one targeted organs. Clear? Yeah. Right?